The story begins with introduction of the leading character, the Xeni, a junior student at Peking University. She has been single since she was born, but one day, a kid boy proposed to her, telling her to be his girlfriend or otherwise leave the company where she works as an internee. Sine has short of money, and for this reason, she should not reject him but cannot not resist and slaps him in his face saying to him, go to hell, brat, because she felt pissed off. But after slapping, she staggers and falls on the floor that boy Gulinksi, a 14-year boy, takes more interest in her as he finds her cutely silly girl. She feels like crying into this and thinks about what kids are fed nowadays saying such things. We moved three days ago to a girl's dorm at Peking University where Xenye is busy playing games on her computer. Her friend, Fii, comes to see her and finds Angie E is playing game Knight of the Sword and asks Sini if she is up early to play the game. Sini sighs, which startles Fei, who asks surprisingly Xeni what she did the whole night. Sini tells her that she has been playing games for the whole night for the internship and now she is tired. Fei pats her on the head and says that it's just an internship and Sini works so hard for it. She can take care of it if Ian agrees to it. Fei suggests to Zai that it would be easy to ask someone to be her master and help her level up her characters. Sini slams the table telling her friend not to remind her of him, referring to master. Sini wants to tell Fei what he said in the game the other day. He wanted her to hold him up by X and I as he wanted to see the sky from a different level just for three seconds. Even though he was tall, he should hold her instead. Zini finds her master unbelievable and cannot understand how her master got to this level. Fei says that she is interested in that type of boy. Jini does not want Fi Ai to talk like this and says that her friend's boyfriend would come to her crying if he heard Zini's friend talking about it. Zini asks her how many boyfriends she had saying this term my type. Fi throws a pillow at Zini by telling her not to talk about her anymore and changes the topic by saying that Zinye is going to join her dream company for an internship. Zinye is feeble and has almost forgotten about it. We see the building of one of the top internet companies, the MCET, Tech office building. It is the place where ex would work as an internee as only one in 200 can get this internship, and she has got it now and wants to work hard to become one of its employees. She enters there and thinks while pushing up her glasses. She has to use her skill. The first rule of the workplace is to be polite with everyone because anyone could be her superior. She talks with the ones estimating their priority. Zinye is spotted by HR supervisor, Kian Kian, who asks Zinye if she is a new internee and introduces herself. It's the technique that Zinye learned after being the student union chairperson for two sessions. It is her experience that teachers prefer polite students. While walking, Kian gets a call and goes away to attend it. Zanye sees a boy and finds him cute. While going on the other side, she bumps into a kid who tells her not to walk if she is blind. She can put on sunglasses and be a fortune teller or something. It makes Anye enraged, and she replies saying who he is and talking impolitely with her. Zanye startles and thinks that if he is the son of Kian, to make up with him, she apologizes, saying that it is her fault and buys him lunch as an apology. Gu Lingxi pulls Ai Ni close to him by holding her necktie and says that he will choose the place. They go to the bakery where different items are present and seeing them, Saini drools and her eyes sparkle. The baker introduces her shop's product saying that all chocolates come from Brussels by Aaron and Lionheart's desserts are made up of the best materials worldwide. Lingxi finds it hard to choose one so he selects some of each kind. Listening to it, Exine gets shocked and tells Linksy, shaking him by his shoulders, that it would cost her a lot. Linksy tells her to let go of him and stares at her. Sinny changes her tone into pleasing one and says he would get diabetes, compelling him to take one kind. She adds that it's not like these are expensive, but eating too much dessert is bad for his health. We see they leave the shop where Linksy is carrying a box of chocolate and eating it, while X and I is checking her money that a box of chocolate costs her half of her month's salary. She does not want it to be in vain and tells him to tell his mother, Kian, that Inye has bought him a box of chocolate. Linksy laughs at her name and says her name goes well with a middle-aged look and these words hit her hard. She is just like an old woman with short hair and an outdated suit. Linksy wants to go now as they have been out for a while. 
and if it's okay with her. He further says if she is late on her first day of the internship, she will not last longer at MHT Institute. Listening to it, she loses her senses. We see Ang Ai is at her workplace and thinking about time when Kian was with her son and Sign learned Lingxi is not Kian's son. While Sinya is sulking at her place, heading down, someone gives her a coffee cup saying her to get refreshed. She raises her head and sees the man also saying others to refresh. He is Sia Chuan, a 26-year-old man. She finds him handsome and realizes he is the man she saw at the lobby. After work, some girls ask her to go with them, but Seni declines their offer, saying her car is in the parking lot and she would drive home by herself. She hears those girls gossiping about her, that she is in university and has a car. Seni cries inwardly that she finds it hard to change her habit of showing herself as a rich girl. Linksy appears before her, saying she is pretending to be a rich woman and calls her old woman. She notices him, saying since when he is here, he tells her he has been there for a whole time. She gets enraged, saying she would have her revenge now for back then. Linksy shows a keychain and tells her to drive him somewhere if she has a license, and in this way, no one will notice her lie. He makes a demonic face and talks about colleagues that what they would think if they found out she is a liar. She takes his keychains to drive him somewhere and gets in the car. We see Wen Han, an assistant of Director Gu. He must have eaten spoiled food. And when he reaches his car, he searches for it, but it's nowhere to be found. He shouts where Lingxi is. It is his new car. Xinye is driving a car where Lingxi sits in the back seat, making a creepy smile. They arrive at a certain location and Lingxi removes key from the car. Zinni finds the car beautiful as it has a streamlined body and comfortable seats but feels sad. It is not her car. She tells him they have arrived where he wanted to go and turns her head to the back seat where she sees Lingxi stripping his shirt. She asks him why she is stripping there in the car and he replies, what's an old woman making a fuss and asks her if she is horny. She is shocked that a pervert is not terrifying, but one at that age is. She accidentally puts her arm on the horn. She wants to get out of the car, as she has driven him there and her job is done. She moves towards the door to go out, but Lynxy locks the door with a keychain. He asks her if she wants to go thinking the ride is for free. He wants her to fold his clothes and put them in a bag as he does not like them wrinkled. He says to spray at the seat where she sits to cover her scent after getting off. She is furious and says if a kid speaks like that in her hometown, he would be slapped. He is dressed in his suit and introduces himself as Gyu Linksy. After listening to it, Zinni prepares her fist to hit him and moves it toward his chest. While she is going for it, he adds to his introduction that his father is the director of MHT Tech. Zinni changes her attitude and starts to set his dress saying it was wrinkled, but now it's better. She affirms that his father is the company's director. He replies she does not know a thing about the company and wonders how she got her internship. There are sparkles in her eyes and she folds his clothes. Outside the car, she asks him where he wants to go next. Linksy replies to her by making a face with his tongue outside and pulling his eyes surrounding skin that he will go where he wants to. She does not need to worry about it. It hits her hard but she accepts it by saying whatever he says. He goes away saying he likes her brown nosing to please him because of his position. In the, the morning, we see her yawning as she had to drive him yesterday, so she had to work overnight. She listens to someone saying she has received an expensive delivery. When her colleague gives Zengi the delivery she got. Sinye finds the delivery so expensive that no one would dare touch it. She does not know a rich person around her who would send it to her. Her sight falls on Linksy standing at the corner of the office room. She tells Wen to tell her superiors that Zainie is on her period and she has gone to prepare her funeral, which he is welcome to attend. She runs from there, dragging Linksy with her and her colleagues see her from behind. Amy takes Linksy to a place and asks him nicely what he wants her to do in the early morning. He wonders if her brown nosing has upgraded to level two. She asks him again what she can do for him now. He asks if she has got a dress he bought for her. She says she was wondering who would have sent it to her. He shows his intention that he has a party tomorrow, which he did not want to attend, but since he has accepted it, he wants someone to go with him. She thinks about what made the kids turn into that. He relives her that she won't be doing it for free and ensures she gets her job permanently afterward. When he is about to go, 
she stops by his shoulders and says she has not agreed to go with him as his date. He says not to worry as he is not interested in women of the 90s. He goes away, telling her to pick him up after school tomorrow. At night, she gets a chat on her phone from Linksy that it is his number. Sydney's roommate, Faye, returns to her room from her workplace and asks her how her internship went today. Faye's sight falls on the delivery package and asks Sydney whether she has robbed a bank or someone rich gave it to her. It's not easy for Akshinai to answer that question. Innie finds with Faye about Gyu Lingsi that his father runs Angu International and his mother runs the family capital. After seeing it, Fei says Lingsi is one of the rich second generation. Due to parents' loveless marriage based on business profits, the kids born eccentric like Lingsi. The attitude of Lingsi is not surprising for Faye. He may want Xinyi to babysit at the party. Feast suggests that Zaini ask him about the dress as they are working people and won't work until paid. Zaini asks him in chat about the dress and what she would do with the dress afterward. He replies to her that she can have that dress. It makes Engzai happy and he tells about it. Fei hugs her saying it's good for her as she can sell it for 20,000 yuan. The next day, Ahini is in the file room searching for papers that managers want but are put high on the shelf. She stands on a stool but slips from it and falls backward, but someone captures her from behind. Chuan puts her down on the ground and advises her to be careful in the workplace. He learns that she is an intern from the planning department. He asks her if she is okay, and his sight falls on her leg, which is twisted. He takes her in his arms and asks if she does feel hurt when she has a twisted leg. She wants him to let her down, but he tells her not to move and check her injury. He does not find it so serious and advises her to apply some oil over the injury, which will recover in some days. He gives his introduction by reaching his hand towards her that he is Aya Chuan, who suggests mountains in summer. She raises her hand to meet his and introduces herself. While joining hands, he gives his phone number to call if she needs help and goes away. She likes the way he treats her. After work, she is with Linksy and wearing a dress he bought. He tells her not to act like a country bum when they arrive. She wants him to go to the ladies' room first, as she is nervous after seeing the luxurious house. She goes to the washroom, thinks that it's a matter of time babysitting a boy, and wants to think about the pay she would get afterward. After refreshing, she feels her self-esteem gone and can now walk shamelessly. At the villa lobby, Someone tells Linksy that they had agreed to bring their girls once and asks Linksy where his girl is. He says he did not want to bring his girl to the party of junior high school students. Zainye appears there, and after seeing her, the students get surprised and even Linksy blushes. She asks Linksy why people at the party are so young, and after seeing Linksy, she asks him why his nose is bleeding. Linksy himself cannot understand the reason. We see Linksy lying over the crouch, and students make Zinni play the game with them, in which she is good. She is leading those students at the game and making scores with her skills. They appreciate her, and Linksy sits behind them alone. She gets a cake to him, saying she did not think his party would be playing games if he had told her she would not have to wear such a dress. Linksy is indifferent and tells her to leave him alone. She understands that he is feeling alone and sits beside him. He teases her for her chest, and she holds him to hit him. There is a student standing, like you, and Linksy calls him by his name, which disturbs him. Kui forbids Linksy to call him by his first name, as his parents chose this name, because they liked Pokemon, but it is a disgrace to his character. He finds Linksy mean as before, and wonders how Linksy has a girlfriend and suspects he must have hired her. Sini wants them to stop quarreling, thinking Linksy has hired her, but she is his babysitter, not his girlfriend. Linksy grabs her by her neck and gives her a lip kiss. Sini hits him in his head, making him fall on the ground, and someone comes there asking who ordered fruit bear. She takes bottles from the box, saying it's her who had ordered, and drinks it right there. After drinking, she says that she had fun today as two boxes are not enough. She would like to have ten. When the party ends, Kwai says to Linksy that they had asked him to bring his girlfriend, but he has brought an alcoholic and how would he go now? Linksy assures him it will be all right. He will call Wen Han. While going back, he says he did not think she would be able to drink so much. 
Zinyi thrashes his arm away, which Lingxi grabs, to which Lingxi sees her and asks if she can walk by herself. He finds her crying and tells him that she had intended to babysit him for today and sell this dress later, but her first kiss was taken. She wanted to give her first kiss to someone whom she likes rather than giving it to someone else. He pats her shoulder, asking her if her first kiss matters so much to her. We see she wakes up on bed and is covered by a blanket. Linksy is sleeping beside her but wakes up due to her. He tells her to get up hurriedly if she wants to, because he feels cold when she lifts the blanket. She asks him loudly the reason he is doing in her bed and wants him to explain to her briefly. He tells her that for a brief explanation, he sleeps there and asks her if she does not remember she has hurt him. She cannot understand why she has hurt him, and the story goes back to time when Linksy is taking Exine back to her place. He is about to kiss her, but she starts vomiting on him. He does not want her to hold him while throwing up. He carries her on his back, and she says she will be fine soon. He asks him how he can behave bad and take her first kiss at such an age even though she is older than him. He should respect the old and love them. Linksy says back that she is right. He does not a thing about love. It was just a kiss to him and he did not want her to take 20,000 yuan worth of dress without doing anything else. He explains his parents had married, did not love each other, and had him, and it shows body contact is just a human instinct. She wants him to understand that this is how he is now, like his parents, and what he will become when he grows up. In her hometown, there is a saying when a kid grows up into a brat, he will get beaten. She starts shaking over him, and he does not want her to move because they will fall. She does not stop as she wants him to be beaten up. He warns her to stop as he would ask his father to fire her from the company. She is willing to leave after beating him to get revenge. As a result, they fall on the ground, it hurts him, and he sees Exini sleeping on him, to which he wonders how she can sleep, making him fall. Xini dreams about Aisha Chuan, who tells her that he thinks of her more than a crush, and when Zaini is about to kiss him, he stops her, saying she has already had a kiss with a kid and in a dream. The boy transforms into Exini, who says it's him whom she kissed. She wakes up from her dream and finds it terrible. He feels her body tired and wonders where she is. She searches for her glasses on the bed, and after wearing them, she finds Linksy sleeping on the bed. Linksy gets up, asking her why she is in bed as it is 10-0 AIM being absent for the internship. She asks him if he does not want something else to say. He misunderstands her and says she does not need to take responsibility. He is referring to accommodation fees but she gets him as he refers to the responsibility of sleeping with her. She expected him to grab her neck and say she would get a penalty if it got out that he slept with her. She lays back again on the bed, and he gets out of the room where Wen Han is outside. Linksy asks him that Wang will take him to school and Han will take responsibility for Exini. Han agrees to take care of her and Linksy asks him a favor to do. Han enters the room carrying breakfast and introduces himself. She thinks Linksy's father man is there, and she needs to try to be a cool and collected. She apologizes to him that she must have troubled him last night, and now she needs to go to work. Han stops her, saying she cannot leave yet. She starts apologizing and saying she knows the wrong one in this matter is her, but does not want to go to prison, as her family is poor and unable to afford her compensation. After hearing it, Han starts laughing and says it is a misunderstanding. It was his nanny who changed her clothes. Linksy had come there twice to wake her up, but she did not wake up and slept there. She feels embarrassed and thinks Linksy must have done it, on purpose making her think like that. She lays back on the bed pretending to sleep. Han asks her if she is interested in doing him a favor and working at a side job as it is easy and highly paid. Listening to it, her eyes sparkle and she agrees to it. We see she is at her job and feels safe. Her colleague asks her if she did not have asked for leave today to remove the hemorrhoid. Zinni stands up quickly and asks her colleague who said this to her. Colleague wants Zinni to calm down as she is the only one who knows it. She went to the tea room to get water and listen manager's assistant asking the chief to grant Zinni leave. Zinni thinks it must be the work of Linksy and she tries to make colleague understand it is not what she thinks. Someone calls her saying someone is looking for her and she goes there to meet the person. Her colleague thinks there must be a story behind it. 
Zinye sighed after getting away that she had almost spilled to her colleague whatever happened, and luckily she got reason to leave. She wonders who is looking for her and sees Linksy sitting there on a crouch. She remembers when Linksy asked her not to take responsibility for him, and asked Linksy if he purposely said those words to her and made her think she did something to him last night. She does not clearly say exact words to him, what she thought, and he cannot understand her. He asks her the reason for speaking nonsense early morning. He gets up and asks her if she thinks of R-rated scenes or thinking of him as PG material. She blushes and steps back, but stucks to a table behind. She says to him that he did that on purpose, and he replies he understands the loneliness of someone who has been single for more than 20 years, and he is there today to get an answer from her. She does not understand what Linksy is plotting now. He makes her sit on a chair and she listens to him, making her think about why she is listening to him as she has no self-esteem as an adult. She asks him what answer he wants. He asks if she still wants to be his girlfriend. She says if he still has it in mind, she thought he was joking about it and would have forgotten it. She does not want to play around with him and says if he makes his father fire her, she will get another job. He assures her she is a top graduate of Peking University and firing her out was a joke. From next month, he will make her salary double. He adds that she would have a bright future if she stayed with him. We see Faye laughing loudly in Dorm's room after listening to Agi, and Sinye makes her keep her voice low. Faye is amused by Linksy that he knew right away that Sinye needs money. Zini wants Faye to stop making fun of her. Faye says she knows Z is forced to take care of Linksy and get the salary, but the title of girlfriend is unpleasant, as if she would do anything else to get money. Based on how Xiny treated him, Linksy knew that if he went too far, she would leave the job, so Feiyai suggested she talk with Linksy being his sister. Xinye finds it hard to be his girlfriend and plans to quit her job. Fei asks Xinye if she is really scared of a kid who would do anything to her. Xinye sends her salary home every month, and her salary is not enough to rent a house in Beijing. As a graduate of Peking University, does not mean she will not get job easily. It's 10.00 a.m., and Zenye recalls gang war going on in the game, and her master would not like it. She opens her computer and enters the game where her master waits for her. She apologizes to him and agrees to join the gang war. Her master wants to come and kill with him. Master starts walking fast and Zine asks him to wait for her. He suddenly stops and she bumps into him. Master, ED, Lin Yuan says to her that it's the second time she has been late. Her ID is Sesame Bun. She tells him that she had to face with unpleasant kid in real life and forgot the time, which makes Master suspicious. She swears she is not lying to him, and if she is lying, she would get diarrhea like last time. Master glares at him as she has told the truth by herself. He finds her so annoying and wonders why he has such an apprentice and gives her another chance. She walks ahead of him and thinks she avoided being sent to dig for hay for his friend and being cute is not easy for her. Master kicks her from behind and she falls on the ground. Some in-game friends wish her happy birthday. She asks them what they are doing, and one of her friends reminds her that it is her birthday today. She shows her gratitude to them, and her master comes to her giving her a gift. She says her master is so stingy than her but he gave her a gift and about to say she will cherish it. Someone appears and falls on her. The gift had stones that fell down, and Aang Zingye started running after him saying to pay her for the gift. We see someone sitting on the computer saying this account is boring and there is MT present on his table. Kasindia gets back to her office and after seeing her, her colleague asks her what she has been doing at night, as she seems tired. Zangye tells it's a long story. Everything went wrong and the stone she got was worth a lot of money. Ixini's colleague asks her the reason for depression and wants to tell Sini some bad news. She tells Jenny Department Chief, as assigned Xini to the Knight of the Sword Project team, and she will be responsible for its planning in the future. She gets excited and stands up to which everyone around her stares at her. She apologizes to them, and Shuan says, Xini, it does not matter, and it's a good thing to be energetic. Sini again affirms with her colleague, if it is true, Colleague tells Zinya that the department transfer notice was issued yesterday, but she was absent-minded and is about to tell Sini about project. Sini gets a phone call. 
Cindy goes away to receive the call. It is Linksy calling who tells her to wait for him at zoo early tomorrow. She asks the reason for going to the zoo. He tells her they are going to have fun. Linksy is with his friend who says Linksy has been making calls a lot lately and asks which girl is it. Linksy tells him about Zaine, a girl who exposes her feelings and fails to hide them. Signe is in the kitchen filling glasses with hot water and thinking if she has to go to the zoo or not. In that thought, her glass fills and spills on her hands. Shuan is close to her and tells her not to be absent-minded. She turns her head and thanks him, but cannot look at him as he is so close to her. Shuan gets it and steps back. He asks her if she has trouble in company and then she can come to him for help. Zinni tells him that she has a problem now and asks what he would do if a kid wants to be his girlfriend. Chuan says he would agree as to what's the difference between a girlfriend or a friend with a kid and advises her not to break a child's heart. He goes to back his work and Sinny observes his keychain and finds it familiar. It is her in-game master's keychain. We see Linksy waiting for Xinny in his car near to entrance of the zoo and ask for time from Wen Han, which is 9.53 a.m. It makes Linksy enraged, and suddenly, Zinni knocks at his window calling him Shorty and stands beside his car. Linksy is upset that he folds his sleeves, but Han forbids him, saying it is his important first date. Zaini makes stances as she has been waiting and Linksy is not showing up. He goes to her and says he has come, which makes her tremble. She asks him what they are going to do today. He tells their activity plan is to spend a day at the zoo. She looks at him dressing especially for today, while when he looks at her, who has messy hair and wearing a common dress. He asks her if she does not spend her salary on shopping as a girl. She says her dress is good as long as she can just go out and meet people. Linksy turns away and calls Han to take her to a makeup artist for a makeover. Yan carries X and I, but she resists and does not want Linksy to dress her up against her will. On arriving there, she sits on the chair and asks loudly from Linksy the reason he has brought her there and wants her to dress up according to his liking as she is his private property. Linksy answers her question by saying he cannot walk with an ugly girl and it makes her angry. The artist shows up and doesn't want her to listen to Linksy. He calls her cuter and after the makeover, she would get cuter and prettier. She finds the hairdresser sweet and observes herself in the mirror and wonders if her hairstyle is really not good looking. The hairdresser says maybe this hairstyle makes her old or mature and these words upset her. She thinks if Chuan also thinks her hairstyle is old fashioned, she accepts and says it is up to hairdresser. Seeing her blushing, Linksy wonders the reason she is blushing. When the haircut is done, she reaches her hand to glasses, but Linksy stops her getting it. He comes to her and holds her face to see her hairstyle. She wants him not to get close to him. He does not listen and puts contact lenses in her eyes. He says this pair of lenses has a degree of angle the same as her glasses. She is surprised looking at herself in the mirror and says she wanted to get lenses but didn't get time for them. Howie wants her to change the dress as they are getting late for the dolphin show. She shows her gratitude to Linksy that makes him blush. She changes her dressing and they run for a show where he blames her for changing her clothes so late. He grabs her hand to run for the show. The show has to start in five minutes and while running, her sight falls on the mother-child bicycle. She grabs him and puts on a bicycle and says happy summer outing for mother and son begins. They reach there faster and she gives him a water bottle saying she did not know he gets bicycle sickness, but thanks to Cycle they have made it. He throws a bottle from her hand and says her he is not weak and doesn't want her take him around bicycle ever like that. She finds him childish and pats his head as if it is the cat's head. She gets terrified seeing his face, thinking what her right hand did is a sinful act and forgot Linksy is a rich boy. He asks her if she has not heard about not to hit someone's face or touch someone on the head. She hesitatingly says she acted on her impulse. They both go to watch Dolphin Show and seeing him happy around Lake. She gets to him thinking he is sure a kid. She says it's getting late and they should go now and grabs his hand. He says loudly to her that she forgets every time and he has to remind her that she is his girlfriend. When people surrounding them listen to it, they gossip about their age gap. She thinks he did it on purpose and makes him stop by putting her hand on his face and says to the crowd he is her brother fascinated by novels and always joking around her. After saying it, she takes him and runs away from there. After reaching far from that place, 
She tells him not to say such things that will mislead people. He tells her that he is not her brother. She knows it and explains to him it's not his age and time to date a girl. He should act like a junior high school student. He grabs her chin to kiss her and goes away, saying he would grow up and grow tall. He goes away, saying he is angry and does not want to drive her back. She hits the ground angrily, saying the junior high school students play games, but remembers her ankle is injured and has not fully recovered yet. Linksy is sitting in his car and waiting for her to come. He says he has taken advantage of his strength to act cute and showed weakness properly as his friend. Kayuli had suggested him, but Linksy does not understand why she has not come to him yet. Han thinks about it that it goes for junior high school girls. Han asks Linksy how he showed his weakness and what he said to her, and learns Linksy told her that he is angry with her. Han is about to laugh but resists, and says maybe this trick does not work on her and wants him to go back now. Linksy makes Han stop and they see Exinai outside. Linksy tells Han to prepare a medical kit and wait for him in the car. He gets out of the car to get her checkup. Igni gets a call from Shuan and she receives it. He informs her that team members of Project Knight of the Sword will go to mountain climbing and asks her if she wants to go. He can recommend her to the top executives of the company in charge of the project. She shows her gratitude to Shuan and informs him she has twisted her ankle again, so she may not be available for mountain climbing. Linksy observes her being pleased from afar and thinks what's the matter with her again. Xenia is standing at mid of the crowd thinking about invitation from Chuan's invitation and someone in crowd wants hers to get aside. Due to a twisted ankle, she becomes unstable and is about to fall. Linksy holds her, asking if she has osteoporosis. She does not want him to show up out of nowhere and startle her. He asks her with whom she was talking about. She hides her mobile phone behind her back and thinks the reason for hiding it, as she has a guilty conscience. She wants her to stay out of business. She can call whom she wants to. He says they are dating today so he can ask about it. Being continuously on her phone, then it can affect the mood of another person. He asks her if she wants to abandon him. Zinni finds him annoying and says if he wants to date a girl, then she must be one around him whom he likes and why he is choosing her. Linksy thinks the reason and a girl with long hair comes into his mind. He laughs at it and she asks him about it. He says he thought of something. He tells her if she refuses then, he will really Al and is about to complete his sentence. Zinnia interrupts, saying she will resign from her position and thinks why she is unlucky. She just has to make money and date a boy, but it's hard for her. She goes away while thinking about it and crying. Linksy stops her from behind. She turns to him, saying what he wants now. He asks her if her foot hurts. We see she is in hospital and some doctor is checking up on her. When the doctor touches her leg, H and E moans due to pain. Zini learns she does not have a serious problem. Doctor gives her some medicine to apply externally and advises X I need to take rest. Han takes the payment bill from a doctor, but Linksy snatches it from Han and goes with the doctor to pay it. There is silence in the room as it is just Xinyi and Han. Zinni is about to say something to Han, but Han asks back if it is hard for her to get along with Linksy. Han asks Xinye if she thinks Linksy is domineering and unreasonable. Zixi replies that although Linksy is mischievous, domineering, and sharp-tongued his nature is not that bad. These words from Linksy hit hard on Han, who thinks if she has always been outspoken. Han informs her about Linksy that he was not like this before. He was kind-hearted and nice but he got disease due to a series of family changes. Xinye inquires Han about disease. Han tells her it is gynophobia and that's the reason he has been hunting Zine. Han tells her about his plan that if she gets along with him for some time, then there are chances Linksy might get better, but it seems Insini does not want to stay with Linksy. Han wants to go down to check up on Linksy as he is taking his time to get medicine for her. Han's words put Insini in thought if Linksy is a boy tortured by prejudice or mockery. When Han is about to go out of the room, she calls him from behind to wait. Han gives a smile and turns his head to her, saying if she does not want Linksy to disturb her, then she does not need to worry. If his condition gets worse, he will. And about to say more, Zinni interrupts him, saying she will help Han in his plan, but not for long as she has her love life in the future. 
Han gets so pleased holding her hands, saying that her three months of internship would be okay. She takes her hands back and says she is not that nice as she has her motives. Han ensures her that if she is worried about the internship, then she does need to. He promises her a good tenure of internship. She replies to him saying she does not care about wealth and fame, but she is focused on beyond the scope of work. He considers she is referring to money and says he understands what she meant and forbids her not to tell Linksy about whatever Han said to her about Linksy. She knows Linksy is sensitive and wants Han not to worry about it. While Han is going out of the room, we come to know he has made up gynophobia disease for Linksy. It's silence in the room where Exini thinks about a boy sitting in a wheelchair who calls her sister and tells her not to worry. Even if he cannot get better, he will still go on living and advises her to live for herself in the future. It is she thinking about her brother while crying about it. Linksy appears and asks if the leg pain hurts her so much. She looks at him who further calls her fragile, that the injury is not even serious. She sits on her bed and reaches out her hand to him, asking him to take care of her in the future as his little boyfriend. He gets into thought and considers it her plot. When Zengi reaches her hand to shake with his hand, he does not react, which creates awkward silence in the room. He pushes her hand aside, to which she says she had been refusing him, but he kept asking her for his girlfriend. Now she is prepared, but he does not seem happy about it. Ingzi gives a creepy smile and puts his hands on her shoulder, saying if he is given the best equipment in the game, he will not accept it. He wants to win by himself and meet his needs. She gets embarrassed and tells him, while carrying a cushion, not to touch her again. He says, while going out of the room, that as a boyfriend, it is his legal right, and she throws it at him, but he has gone. She says he makes her so mad and finds it embarrassing by a kid in her 20s. She can feel her heartbeat running fast, but does not want to think about him as he will be out of her life when the deal is over. She lays back on the bed while Linksy is out smiling. Han comes to him saying he has been looking for Linksy. Linksy asks Han if he has said something to Vincene, and Han asks him what the matter is. Suddenly, Linksy's mobile phone rings and he goes away to receive it. Han thinks he should have made up some disease other than gynophobia, but Sine believed it. But as long as Linksy is happy, he is ready to risk his life for Linksy and gets in Zaini's room. Linksy receives a call, which is from his friend, Keiuli, who asks Linksy if he is doing well with his love. He had advised Linksy to win the heart of his love. Linksy replies to him saying it has been foolish of him to listen to a bad advisor who has been single for his entire life. He cannot understand how Linksy fell for a poor girl, even though he used to be friends with the rich brats. Kay informs Linksy that his father has bought an internet company recently. He has found something about Project Night of Swords, in which Linksy is interested in. Linksy enters Xenai's room, where Han is also present. Sinye asks if she wants to stay in the hospital, and even the doctor said her injury is not serious. She wants to go and asks him to drive her home. When Igzini enters her dorm room telling her friend, Fei, that her day has been full of ups and downs and finds out the room is empty. She wonders it is so late and Fei has not been home yet, which is out of her routine. Sinny considers that Fei Yi would be having a fun time with her boyfriend. She opens her computer to play her daily tasks at the game and wonders why she has got a lot of messages in game. Suddenly, Fei opens the door forcefully and she is drunk. Xining inquires her why she has been drinking a lot and if his boyfriend did not stop him. She has been best at drinking among girls. Then how come she ended up like this? The AI pushes Ixaini back, saying leave her alone. Sini learns from Fessy that her boyfriend has dumped her. Sini has always feared about what has happened now. Sini did not expect Faye to be dumped so soon. Sini makes Faye sleep. And when she is in her bed, she gets a chat from Lynx saying her night farewell. She says him to sleep such as bed bugs don't bite him. Seeing this text on his mobile, he showers water from his mouth, which he has been drinking. When Han is about to go from Linksy's room, Linksy tells Han to ask for half a month off from his school and set his alarm clock half an hour ahead of his schedule. Sinye on the other side wants to sleep, but she seems to have forgotten something but cannot remember and sleeps saying it would not be something important. Her computer is powered on and she gets messages from her master in the game. It's morning and Zningy wakes up saying she has a good sleep without an alarm. 
she could not sleep until 3.00 p.m. due to comforting Faye. While passing by the computer, she remembers what she had been forgetting at night. She has wasted her point card during the night and logs in to the game where her game friend says she has been worried for Zaini. She asks Zaini about what happened in the game, but Zini does not know as she has just woken up. Her friend suggests Zaini go to a forum where she will get to know about it. Zaini asks her if it is about her master. Her friend cannot understand Zini how she lasted long in the game. Zinyi is confused about the situation and a guy comes there in game. Zinyi asks her friend who he is to which the guy tries to remind her that they had a huge transaction. Zinyi remembers. He is the guy to whom she had bought a potion and he couldn't stop bickering. He tells her about the potion he bought got exploded right after a few days. Zinyi guessed what her friend told her earlier about a forum that guy would have said something about her on the forum. He says he could not control his anger earlier and Sinyi draws her sword, saying how foolish he is, buying a potion without its case. The master appears there and pushes her aside, telling her to be like a lady. Exindy finds her master cool, as he seems quite mean and hard to approach, but he actually cares a lot. Three men appear, saying to the guy if Sinye and her master have not apologized to him already, what he wants now. They refer to Sine and her master with weird names while talking to the guy. Angers Enzai and she does not want to play games with them. She is about to write something in the game, thinking they have triggered her wrath. But suddenly, her computer shuts down. She slaps her computer to make it run again, but it breaks. Faye wakes up from Zinye's crying and asks about it from her. Zinye tells Fair that her laptop has broken, in which she has spent 4,000 yuan. Fei knows about it and offers her help, saying she will get someone to look at Zinni's laptop as Zinni helped her last night. Listening to it, Sinye gets pleased. Fei wants Sinji to go out together and get a repair person for her. We see they are sitting in a restaurant. Sinni asks Fei they had come out to get repair person, but what's the reason they are present there? Fei tells her to seize each opportunity for romance and listening to it. Zaini showers out the tea from mouth she was drinking. Faye wants Zegznia to be careful about her appearance, not make Faye embarrass. The guy they will meet is Faye's friend from her high school, and Faye thinks he is Inzi's type. Jaini does not seem to like this blind date and remembers Linksy, who said she is his girlfriend. Zini does not like to imagine him in a situation like this. She is in a deal with him, not in a relationship, but still she does not want to drag him into such setups. Zinni stands up to go to fix her computer as she has to take revenge in her game. Someone calls her by name from behind, and she turns her head to see him. It is Chuan, and after their eye contact, there is silence created. Chuan says it is really Enzaini. He could not recognize her from back due to the change of hairstyle and finds it cute. Listening compliment from Chuan, Zaini feels cheering. Chuan did not know Exine was Fei's roommate, otherwise he could have brought a gift for Zinai. Fei laughs and says how considerate Chuan is to bring a gift in the first meeting. Zinyi tells her that it is not their first time meeting. He is the head of the department, young and successful. Chuan sits across her seat and says S is Wari is also kind. Their department went hiking, but she did not come and others asked him to bring something for her. While they are talking, Linksy's friend, Kay sees Enye sitting across Chuan and wonders who he is.